Hello, my name is Kang Wendelin and I am from Singapore. This is my third year involved in robotics and my RoboCup experience involves participating in RCJ on stage last year and supposedly RCJ soccer this year before it was cancelled. So basically, here is my learning experience from this iCool challenge. Firstly, from using the CoSpace robot, I feel that I've learned more about how to use conditions, specifically how to use them effectively to ensure that I can improve my scores. Which brings me to the next point about what I have learned through this challenge. Through this competition, I have learned to adapt and strategize. I had to pick out effective strategies to implement in my code so that a maximum number of objects can be collected and deposited in a given 5 minutes. This included strategizing ways to ensure the robot does not end up moving in a suboptimal loop because moving along the same path would significantly reduce the amount of objects that can be collected within the 5 minutes run. At the same time, I also had to ensure that my code was in a way flexible enough such that it could be easily fine-tuned for the actual competition run itself. Furthermore, I have also learned other values such as perseverance through taking the time to debug the code and not just entirely giving up on it. For example, when my robot stopped being able to deposit objects, I had to figure out why. And through a few runs, I managed to notice that it was because the RGB values in, for the deposit zone overlapped with the RGB values of red objects, resulting in the robot sometimes recognizing that as an object rather than the deposit and ended up carrying the pickup function instead of the deposit function. Next, despite this being an individual competition, I still learn to collaborate with others to learn about the strategies that they have implemented that I can learn from and the mistakes that they have made that I can take note of and not repeat. For learning from the videos of others, I truly believe that there is something for me to learn from everybody's video, but I am particularly interested in learning from participant IN5006 and SG5035 because I feel that some of the strategies implemented were very useful and can help me improve my scores. Through my takeaways in this competition, I hope to be able to share my experience with those who are interested and also help them pick up this knowledge. So now moving on to my game and strategies. So firstly, the category that I took part in is Cospace Rescue First Steps U19. So here is a summary of the strategies that I have implemented. These will be touched on more further into my presentation. So I split the strategies into four broad categories. Basic strategies, strategies for when loaded objects equals zero, strategies for when loaded objects equals to 6, and other strategies. So for basic strategies, this includes getting the robot to stay 20 cm away from the walls and obstacles, as well as trap avoidance by turning away when the robot senses the yellow warning zone. As for strategies when loaded objects equals to 0, the robot is not to deposit or avoid traps, and also to increase its speed as well. Whereas for when loaded objects equals to 6, which is the maximum load the robot can carry, the robot is to stop picking up objects and find the deposit zone. Under the others category, the strategies include depositing when loaded objects is larger than or equal to 2. Now that I have run through briefly some of the strategies used, let me get into the details and show you how exactly it will look like in the simulator. Firstly, the basic strategies. So as we all know, the robot has three ultrasounds, front, left and right. To avoid crashing, when any of these ultrasound values go below 20 cm, the robot will turn away from the obstacle or wall near it. The rationale for using 20 cm in these cases is because the closer it is to the edge, then there's fewer objects, so it will be a waste of time to constantly let the robot move into areas within 20 cm of the walls. Furthermore, 20 cm will also allow ample time for the robot to turn away for when it detects any walls and obstacles. When the robot is getting too close to the walls, it will turn to avoid crashing. Another basic strategy that I have implemented is trap avoidance, where basically if any one of the color sensors were to sense the RGB values of the yellow warning zone, the robot will immediately turn away to avoid the robot falling into the trap, hence losing points. Here is an example of how the robot responds when it senses the yellow warning zone. Since the robots have objects loaded onto it, 
Once it senses the RGB values of the yellow warning zone, it will immediately turn away. Now moving on to strategies when no objects have been collected by the robot. Firstly, the robot will not deposit objects when the load in the robot equals to zero to reduce the amount of time stopped because time is required to deposit the objects but no points are being earned from an empty deposit making it a waste of time to deposit. Unfortunately, this case was not depicted in a match so here is an example of how it should work on my software. As you can see, the robot has no objects loaded onto it, therefore it will simply move over the deposit zone without stopping. Secondly, the robot will also not avoid traps when the robot has no objects collected to allow the robot to not keep turning back into the same areas where it has already collected the objects. This will prevent it from travelling in a loop which will significantly decrease the number of objects it can collect. Lastly, the robot speed will also increase from 50 to 70 to allow it to blind speed faster without the risk of losing any points. Here is an example of the robot performing these two strategies. As you notice, the robot now has objects loaded onto it. So it is moving slower, but once it has deposited the objects, the robot starts to move at a faster speed and simply run over the trap since no points will be lost. On the other hand, when the object counter equals to 6, the robot is to stop picking up objects to reduce the time taken to get to the deposit zone, so there is no need to stop 3 seconds every time it senses an object to carry out the pickup function, since the objects won't even be collected by the robot and no points are being earned. In this video, the robot is now fully loaded, therefore it will stop picking up any objects and just simply run over it. Next, we have the other strategies. Um, this includes only depositing when the robot has at least two objects. This is because there were many instances where I had one object and had to spend time depositing it, which is kind of a waste of time because the points earned are not that much. In this instance, the robot has exactly two objects. Hence, it, will, it fulfills the criteria and the robot will perform the deposit function. That is all the strategies that I have to share with you today. And I hope that you have enjoyed learning about my experience and the strategies that I have used. Thank you!